Welcome back. Well, it's my pleasure to uh, be joined in studio by Gail Vazoxlade. This is the uh, latest book, Money Rules. A lady I learn a whole lot from. Welcome to CTS Weekend. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. I've got to tell you, you are, no word of a lie, one of the people I learn the most from when yeah. I'm watching television. Because I do believe that all of us, when it comes to no matter how educated we are, um, money education is not something that we all get. Well, you know, it's so sad that what happens is people start talking about money and the audience sort of tunes out and what they hear is mwah, 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 <laughs> like on the Charlie Brown cartoon. Mm -hmm. And part of it is that so much of the language about money is very complex. I mean, we right. purposely made it incredibly confusing for people. Right. And what I try to do is I try to simplify it so that anybody can understand it. My goal, of course, mm -hmm. is for a 12-year-old to be able to get whatever it is I'm saying. And I say to people, you know, when, like when you're going to go buy an investment, mm -hmm. you should be able to explain it to a 12-year-old. Well, and that's the thing. If we can do that, though, we're going to be raising 12-year-olds to become responsible. Adults, Absolutely. Be, that's the goal. Absolutely. We want our kids to be smarter about money and one of the things I've been doing as I've been on this latest book tour is speaking to university and college kids mm -hmm. and saying to them please don't walk in the footsteps of your parents because they have royally buggered it up <laughs> okay so what you want to do is you want to not do what they did mm -hmm. and you want to make sure you build yourself a solid foundation and not you know, not measure yourself by the badges that you put on. Right. Now, you deal with so many different people. I mean, I've watched the shows. I've watched Till Dead Do Us Part. I've watched Princess. Yes. Um, no matter what the age, whether it's couples, individuals, everyone seems to land in the same pit. What do you think are the, the common pitfalls that get people there? Well, probably the biggest one is the fact that nobody has any idea what they're doing with their money. It right. appalls me sometimes. I mean, I just want to reach out and slap some people because we work so hard for our money, you know, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's snowing outside, if it's raining outside, if we are sick, if the children have been sick all night and we've been up all night, it makes no difference. We drag our butts to work and we work hard for our money and then we won't spend any time actually tracking it and managing it. Right. And I scratch my head and people say to me sometimes, you know, well, Gil, you know, you're kind of anal <laughs> in what you want us to do. And I go, maybe, but I see it as a choice between discipline and regret. Mm -hmm. And hey, I'm all about the discipline. I'd rather not do the regret. And I, I find that one of the common things I find when you, I see you on television talking to people, if you, if you go through the book, People have to actually look at their finances yes. and uh, tracking it, like writing it down, seeing a, um, an actual hard copy of it is, yes. is a, a key. Absolutely, because that makes you a conscious consumer. Mm -hmm. So often what happens is we buy without thinking about what we're buying. Even if we hand out cash, we don't actually think about the purchases mm -hmm. that we're making. But when you take your receipts, you collect your receipts all week long, and then you track them into a spending journal, mm -hmm. and then once a month you take the information from your spending journal and post it into your budget, you have to look at it over and over again. And then you're saying, to yourself, okay, is this really where I want my money to be going? Mm -hmm. I'm working so hard for it. Is this helping me achieve the goals that I want to achieve? Am I even happy that I spent my money in this way? And if I'm not happy, what am I going to do differently? Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, I noticed when you, when you were dealing with people, you often, almost always take away the plastic, you take away the credit cards and the debit cards. Yes. Um, how do you get back into using your plastic responsibly once you've learned how to deal with cash? The big key to that is the spending journal. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that every time you use your plastic, you deduct it from what you already have in the bank. So, you know, people keep saying to me, Gail, make an app. Mm -hmm. Never going to make an app. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Okay? This is the app, right? Well, because the app is for lazy people. Mm -hmm. You're asking me to tell you how to do it, make one entry and have it go everywhere right. for you. And I'm not going to do that. I want you to pay attention to your money. And so you get a notebook and a pen. Mm -hmm. Technological, right? <laughs> You write in your balance for your bank statement right. at the top of, or your bank balance at the top of the page, and every time you spend a penny, you deduct it. Mm -hmm. Every time you get money, you add it in. But you're always working with the actual money you have in the bank. So if you wrote your brother-in-law a uh, check mm -hmm. three months ago and he hasn't cashed it yet, you don't have to worry about when the check's going to go through the bank because you already You've deducted already it three months ago, okay? Doesn't matter when he puts it in. Same thing with your credit card transactions. Right. I know people who get their credit card transactions and they look at their bank statement or their credit card statement at the end of the month and they go, $1,800, oh my goodness, how did I do that? 
right. because they have no sense of where the money has been going. But if you've been tracking all those entries right. in your spending journal, you've set aside the money. But scarier still, I know many people who don't even open the credit card statement. Oh, I know. <laughs> what is with that? Okay, truly, there are people who people. shred them. Mm -hmm. There are people who stick them in a drawer. There are people who take them out of the mailbox and drop them in the garbage because all they're going to do is make a $100 payment yes. and they don't really care what else the credit card statement mm -hmm. says. Unfortunately, those very people are the ones that I show, hey dudes, $97 of that $100 payment you're making is, is going to interest. You're paying off $3, divide three into your balance. Mm -hmm. Tell me how long it's going to take you to get oh. to debt free. Forever. 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 Absolutely. Um, another thing I've, I've gotten out of this, and I, you mentioned it in the book, you mentioned it on TV all the time. Um, I think we've raised a society of people that feel above many jobs Earning money yes. has become an issue. Yes, money is money is money. Isn't doesn't it? doesn't matter what you have to do to earn it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if your objective is to keep a roof over your head and food in your stomach, raise your family responsibly, build a solid financial foundation, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter what you do. And we have, but you know, it's my generation again that's done it with stratified jobs. Mm -hmm. that's and very so true. what happens is the guy who's making $250,000 a year, we think he's smarter than the guy that's making $35,000 a year, yet the guy who's making $250,000 a year may be a liar and a thief, mm -hmm. whereas the guy who's making $35,000 a year may be helping an autistic child in a classroom learn to cope with their life. So this is not about how much money you make. Quality this is about your quality of life, mm -hmm. what you take from your life, how you learn, and what you end up giving back to your community, because what you want to be doing is living a worthwhile life. That's such a true thing, and that's just one of the many lessons in the book. Yes. Uh, before we run out of time, briefly want to talk about a new show coming up. Money Moron. Yes. <laughs> Money Moron. Yes. All the people who would put their own needs and wants before the relationships in their lives. Mm -hmm. People who are doing things that affect other people in a really negative way and don't understand the consequence could be the loss of something really important. Excellent. So we'll be watching that. Starts in April. Starts in April, April 19th. Very good. So we'll watch for that. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining me My today, pleasure. Gail.